Hey guys, I wanted to go ahead and do a really quick video, nice quick um, write up, if you will, on how to clean your exhaust valves. And really, I guess the first thing to start with is why you'd want to clean them. Even though they're supposed to be self cleaning on the axis and matrix chassis, we found that regardless of what oil you're running, and they do get dirty with time, they start to stick and it really starts to impact your performance. And where the your performance is mostly impacted is going to be on the top end, really kind of up over, call it 75 or 80 miles an hour, that if you end up with dirty exhaust valves, you will start to fall flat or it'll feel a little bit more flat on the top end. So if you end up having some issues on your top end and it, you know, you're starting to worry, is it your motor? Is it something more serious? Then please go ahead and, and perform this service. It's really simple. Like I said, this works on the 800, 850s, 600, 650s, whether it's the Matrix or on the um, on the axis chassis and so really it's a it's a simple little procedure um, one may think that they have to take apart the steering stem and move a number of things out of the way that's just not true um, but there is one little trick which is not to disconnect the cable that goes over to the uh, to the power valves you need to leave that attached now after you clean your power valves if you still feel like you're lacking some power up top then I think you need to go ahead and proceed further, whether it's with a compression test or taking it to the dealer to see what else is going on. But this generally gets the job done. Uh, for us, we were performing this maintenance about every, I would say, 3,000 to 3,500 miles. Mike decided to do an experiment and push his to kind of 5,000. And in the end, it, it did start to fall on its face, and he did start to see a lack of power. So once we got those valves cleaned back up again, uh, he was back in action. Right now, his, uh, his machine is in his shop. We thought it was another... Uh, perhaps power valve cleaning issue. Uh, come to find out, he ended up having some uh, some more complicated issues with his motor, which we're going to show in a different video. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this really simple video here. A uh, couple of minutes, uh, just some of the tips and tricks and pointers on how to get done this uh, power valve cleaning. Yes, yeah, so the whole concept is how to clean your uh, power valves. And the one thing I'll say is that do not remove this cable here. It might seem like it's easier, and it might seem like it's the thing to do, and it, indeed, if you had a dealership, it probably is easier. However, if you remove this cable or this setup where it stands, then you have to get, according to the dealer, and it's probably correct, a recalibration of the power valves. So if you're planning on going to the dealer, yes, you can do that. Otherwise, you can pull this out and show you how to go ahead and clean them without removing that cable. So what we gotta do is take out these, there's four bolts there, five millimeter Allen or hex keys, three and then four is back behind the steering shaft, but you can access it. And you don't have to take anything out besides just pulling off the hood and the fenders. I'm gonna start to wiggle it out. And you can see I've started to wiggle it out. I didn't have to pry it, didn't have to do anything. There are two O-rings that will mate between with this power valve uh, it goes up against the head and you got to be careful when you're <clears throat> working with those o-rings not to get them wet with any solvent because they'll grow and once they grow they're more difficult to get back in and get seated right so you're going to keep them pretty dry just wipe them off with a paper towel or a rag i'm going to go ahead and continue to slide this out and you keep wiggling back and forth and you can see they'll come out this far and they already look pretty nasty and you can see that this cord does clear now I'm gonna continue wiggling now you can see if you wiggle this steering stem it can be better or worse so you need to get that kind of position and if you don't like the position just move it over to the passenger side and um, it should come straight out as soon as you pull it out just be aware there's a couple of um, uh, loose or slide plates that are just kind of held in with the springs don't lose those and we'll set it on and start cleaning now the last trick is you can see there's a gap here you actually push this bar that actually controls the valves backwards so it compresses that so you have that gap in there and once you do that you actually get enough cleaners to get it out if you don't pull this back and this is flush up against here you don't have enough clearance to get out 
once you rotate these up and around, this now is the PTO side that lives on the brake side because it's been rotated up and out and flopped down. And then this obviously is the brake side, it's now on the PTO side. And you can see there's quite a bit of buildup there. And um, it hasn't started to affect the performance yet. Matter of fact, they slid out rather easy, but we'll get them cleaned up and they'll be good again for another you know, 3,000 miles or so. I think that's been about the interval that we've been doing these uh, with great success. And when we don't do them, as we've seen, Mike's sled right now is in the shop, um, getting them cleaned up uh, with some other maintenance. Now those seals I talked about earlier are right here. And if you're careful not to get solvent on them, they'll stay parked in there. But as soon as you get solvent on them, they kind of blow up. So it's one thing to be careful. And the other thing is you can see, I kind of made a little nest here to hang this thing in. Uh, stuff gets everywhere for sure. So you want to stuff a couple rags in here before you get going. Now cleaning these off, you're going to use a, um, an X-Acto blade and you're going to carve off, you know, scrape off gently all of these bits and clean up all these bits with some rags and a, a little bit of light solvent. And, uh, and ultimately I use a small screwdriver as well to get in there. It does make a mess. Uh, but we'll go ahead and start digging. As I mentioned as well, you have these extra slide plates here on top. Remember those go on top and those are just kind of held in place with the, uh, with the tension of the spring and they slide up and down or you need to clean in all those parts anyhow, so you'll be taking it apart. And you'll see in the end, you can get these things pretty clean without even using a um, solvent that was just using really a small razor blade and a, um, and a paper towel. And, and you can get them at the point in time and after that it gets to a point of diminishing returns. You don't wanna put any scratches in that because then it just causes more buildup. Once you have it all reassembled, Last thing to do is to clean up as much of that portion as you can, and then slide them back in.